Hello. I've experimented with relays and microswitches to get solenoid point motor control and point position feedback sensors working with a Raspberry Pi Pico. I'll explain how I went about it and how I'll use it on my railway. Welcome to Endor N-Gage Model Railway. I'm Jonathan. I explained in video 28 that my overall objective here is to simulate digitally and electronically the interlocking logic that's found in mechanical signal boxes. In that previous video, I got the digital logic in place for the interlocking, but the points were purely virtual. I decided that the microswitches already connected to each of the point motors could be used for input to the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller to tell it what the current state of the points is. The microswitches are already controlling 12 volt relays using a 12 volt DC power supply. That's far too much to send to the Pico, but more 12 volt relays can connect in parallel with the existing ones, then be used for input to the Pico. The same relays as I already had weren't available, so instead I did a bit of searching on Amazon and settled on this 8 relay module. It was $7.99, so £1 per relay, which is actually cheaper, and the module has features beyond just the relays. There seem to be lots of similar modules around. This one takes positive and negative DC power on two terminals, then control signals on one terminal per relay. To get power from a 12 volt DC plug to some cables, I used this spare socket. Its terminals aren't labelled, but from the positions it looked like the big one was probably connected to the centre of the socket. I experimented with the other two to find which is connected to the negative. I borrowed a plug from the layout. It's the one that usually powers the relays and LEDs, and its label says that the inside of the connector is positive and the outside negative. This relay module didn't arrive with any documentation whatsoever, but it had information on Amazon, so I've saved the useful bits to my computer. Each relay is triggered by either a high or low voltage. Nothing says what those voltage levels are, and all of the relays came configured to trigger on high. To send a signal, I connected one of the control inputs to the positive power supply and heard the relay click. It also has an LED to indicate that it's energized, which is nice to have. Since the 12 volt supply could also be used for the input, that means I'll be able to connect the control inputs for these relays directly to the existing microswitches that are on the layout. The next step was to make sure I could use the relay's output terminals with the Pico. In terms of programming code and pin connections, this is the same concept as the switches that I connected in video 28. There are various ways that the connections could be arranged. I connected the relay's common terminal to the Pico's ground, and then the normally open relay terminal to a general purpose input-output pin on the Pico. When there's no break in the circuit, the value of the pin will be zero, because it's connected to the Pico's ground, which is zero volts, or low. That means when the circuit is broken, I want the pin to read as high, so need its value pulled up. After briefly getting myself confused about which way around everything needed to be, I got it all aligned and working as required. Next up, solenoid point motor connections. Each point motor needs two relays, and there are two possible arrangements that I thought of. I decided to use one relay to switch which end of the point motor is going to get power, and another relay to connect or disconnect the power overall. This arrangement guarantees that only one end or the other of the solenoid gets power. They can't both be energized at the same time. The solenoids must only get momentary power to avoid them burning out. So for the relay that controls point motor power, I very deliberately use the normally open terminal, so that when the 12 volt DC supply to the relays is cut, the point motor power won't accidentally be left connected. All of these little experiments are done in scraps of time on different days. Next time I came to it, I wanted to control the point motor from the Raspberry Pi Pico, but this time decided to use LEDs to represent the solenoids, because it gives me a more obvious outcome. I also used some different relay modules. These are ones that I'd bought with the point motors in mind, but hadn't tried them yet. They also didn't come with any documentation, so I just have the information on the Amazon listing to go by. The challenge to solve with this setup is how to get a signal from the Raspberry Pi Pico to the relay. After watching plenty of videos and doing Google searches, my conclusion was that the relay power and the Pico need to have their negative and ground connected, and that worked. For current to flow into the relay control terminal, there has to be a circuit, so with only one terminal available to receive a signal, it must be that the relay module has an internal connection back to its negative terminal but I couldn't integrate that with the existing electrics as is. There was a catch. 
From the videos and articles I'd seen, I'd learned that components like relays can cause a surge of current when they're de-energized, enough to fry something like the Raspberry Pi Pico. So modules like the ones I've bought use something called an optical coupling on relay control inputs. These say they don't have an electrical connection from the input signal instructing them to the coils of the relays. My LEDs on the layout were in the same 12 volt circuit as my relays, so could my LEDs be at risk from this? I wasn't sure if they were, but if any LEDs do break, I'm unlikely to be replacing them, since they're embedded in the cork under the track, so I decided to separate the LED and relay power circuits. I'm still left a little uneasy about connecting the negative power terminal for the relay power circuit and the ground from the Pico. I'm not sure what effect this has on the isolation that the relay module opto coupling provides. To me, it seems that the circuits are being connected by having a common ground. But given how widespread this advice seems to be in forums and on YouTube videos, I assume it still works. Ultimately, all of the plugs that these things will be powered by are on the same main circuit, and here in the UK they should all have an earth connection that goes to real ground. I think this means that the current won't flow from the negative of the 12 volt relay power circuit into the Pico. Current will flow to the real ground but I've not had success in finding a definitive answer about this, or in fully understanding what's happening. Anyway, it was time for a new version of my wiring plan. Armed with that, I set about the rewiring. As well as separating the circuits, I also removed a redundant relay. It was intended to isolate all of the point frog power connections if relay power was off, but the electrofrog points render it useless. I explained that in more detail in video number 5. I took the opportunity to see how the LEDs looked with a lower power supply. Some people left helpful comments on other videos of mine, advising me not to deliver current that's close to the maximum that an LED can tolerate. The LEDs looked fine at 6 volts. That's half the previous voltage, so it should be half the current, since the resistance is unchanged. After rewiring, I tentatively checked that things still worked. I could hear the relays click as they got power and switched off again, and the LEDs behaved as they should. Another day, another relay module. When I first ordered some for point motor control, I hadn't realised I'd need two per point motor, so didn't have enough. On the 8 relay module, I liked that only two power connections were needed, so I got two 4 relay modules. That reduces the number of wires needed while still allowing a bit of flexibility about where I position the modules. I wrote a quick program to switch a point motor back and forth a few times. The main thing to note here is that the point motor power is only connected for a fraction of a second. I was delighted to see it working. Fundamentally, there's nothing new here. My earlier experiments covered what was necessary, but it was nice to see it working in practice. The next steps will be to engineer point motor control into my existing interlocking code, figure out exactly where I'm going to attach the extra relays and the Pico, and change the momentary contact switches for ones that spring back to centre. That's all for now. Bye bye.